Well, that's easy. My name is Donna Powell, and I am the Director of Programs for Fajas. Ivy Sanchez, and my current position is Assistant Programs Manager. My name is Jacob Ducey, and I'm the Grants Manager at Fajas. Uh, my name is Crystal Miller Williams. I am the nurse practitioner at Fajas. Uh, you really get to see people, at least in our field, we get to see people evolve. Um, you get to see them from, sometimes they come in really um, in a really bad place in their life. And then as the months go by, you see them really flourish. Um, and be, become independent? For me, it's, um, it's challenging, but also comforting. And I say that because we don't always have a steady flow um, of income that we can bank on because we you know, essentially work with grants. But for me, knowing that I'm actually making a difference with others and in the lives of others, that is the probably the most rewarding part for me is just working with other people and trying to make a difference. So it's interesting. I have an anecdote to illustrate that. Um, my dad is always asking, hey, how's it going? How's the job? Have you, have you been applying to any other place yet? And I always ask my dad, well, wh why do you want me to apply somewhere else like I, I'm 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 paying my bills like and he's like oh well you work for a nonprofit. you're never going to make money and I just kind of chuckled uh because there's a truth to it but also not a truth and so I'll illustrate the truth to it my friend of five years now he does not have a four-year degree however is a great salesman and works for an insurance company he makes considerably more money than I do. Um, it's a for-profit insurance agency. So they're making uh, six figures. I'm still at five figures. However, the difference between the for-profit and non-profit is not as, well, one, the, the salary, which is true. However, the quality of life. Uh, my friend from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to bed has to think about when he clocks in and how he can maximize the agency's profit when he's clocked in. And that's it, period, point blank. Uh, for a nonprofit, you do have to think about profit, but not in the way of, I need to profit so that my career is safe or that I can get money, but we need to make profit so that those who are without can get X services or Y funds so that the overall community that we are servicing uh, is benefited. And that's the huge difference is it the perspective of how you look at the profit. Um, funny you should ask. I was thinking about telling that to my sister. <laughs> so um, my sister's a nurse, so uh, she just became a nurse. And of course she wouldn't do any, she don't do things the way I do, but I've been working in this profession uh, close to 30 years. So uh, it's a little bit different than working for a, a profit organization or for profit. One is that I get a chance to work in the community and feel like I'm giving something back. Whereas when I was working for a for profit, I was not in that circle. The cir you know, uh, a lot of people who are in the circles of seeing the pay seeing the people in the community and, and actually doing business with the community are people who are at a higher echelon so um or i should say they're uh they're at a higher pay raise so um and when i say higher pay raise i mean i mean really extremely higher so but in my pay range or uh even with the people who make less than I do we're all working together and we're all out in the community together and it's I, I like it like that this thing I think is working with seeing your clients um 
not really being able to help clients, being able to refer them to services that may not know that were available to them, or um, just seeing that someone cares and just having, even if you only impact one life, that really, um, it makes you feel really, um, it, give, it really does definitely give you that sense of reward. Um, that's the best part. The worst part I think is um, always not, uh, not knowing how uh, funding is going to go. Um, whether it's state funding or federal funding, um, you never really know what's being cut depending on the administration and the presidential administration and the um, government on, on the government. So it's um, that's the worst part. Um, and for us, uh, being in the middle of two really big cities, it's really about trying to fight for what we know we deserve as far as money for our people and trying to make the big cities understand that rural communities need just as much resources as the big cities. The, let's start with the worst first. Because <laughs> I can always think of the worst one I can think of positive. I think the worst part is the unknown. Because we are grant funded and we never know what um, society is going to dictate, what the power, powers that be are going to deem um, important anymore and whether or not we're gonna be able to fit that bill. Um, that's always probably one of the worst things of working with the nonprofit. If we don't have a regular funding stream, then it makes it hard for us to do the work that we love to do. Um, the best part for me is again, working with people and not having to, not having to deal with such strenuous, I think work environments or strenuous, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, regulations, so to speak. Because when you're working with government and corporate entities, there's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of bureaucracy. And working with nonprofit, not as much. Now you still have some because you come, you know, you have funding sources, but it's not as bad as working with um, corporate and um, and and government entities. In the spot, the the best is the is the people, and that means the people I work with, the people I I work for, the people I serve. That's the best thing. The worst thing, you never have enough money. <laughs> um, <clears throat> research the agency uh, for two things: uh, financial stability. You want to make sure that the nonprofit agency can pay you regularly. Uh, I don't want to give you the, the the idea that nonprofit agencies out here just aren't able to pay and they're broke. However, you have to be careful because there are a lot of them. Um, with that said, you've researched the company. They're historically financially stable from year to year because those documents, of course, are public. Research the culture. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a situation in which you're really passionate about the work you're doing, the cause and the mission of your agency, uh, but you're the only one who's passionate and everybody else is collecting a paycheck. That would be a frustrating situation to be in. Um, and I hope that you don't find that, in that but it's something to be aware of because culture uh, can affect your day-to-day. -day, and if your day-to-day -day is affected, then that could translate to client care. We want um, nonprofit agencies doing work that the government can't afford to do or don't have the resources to do. Uh, we want that work to be as best as possible. One, I think, is definitely fight what, for what you think is right. Um, but don't burn yourself out. Um, don't um, don't ever feel like you have to work over you know a certain amount of hours because then at the end it it'll just end up um, you'll end up burning yourself out and then you will be able to fight for the people that really do need you. Absolutely. Um... 
do so responsibly. Um, if you have a bunch of uh, college debt or other monthly expenses, and you're really passionate about an agency, it's nonprofit, but the position isn't able to pay what you can, maybe that's not for you right now. Sometimes you have to work for a for-profit to get in a better place. But um, if you can financially work for a nonprofit and advance with it, I would absolutely advise it because again, that sense of purpose that I don't know you can get so easily from most for-profit places. Not to say that you can't, however, the likelihood is drastically diminished. For me, I'm going to go by what, for me, I always wanted to work for a nonprofit, like World Health Organization, um, somewhere on that lines, uh, you know, some type of mission, organization. Um, if you want to work for a nonprofit, me personally, I would tell you to go to a for-profit and get as many skills as you can collect from them. I would give myself a timeline of what I'm going to get from them. And then I start moving into a nonprofit arena. It's a, it's work um, because uh, a lot of people, um, especially in the nonprofit sector, you'll hear a lot of me clients where they are. And um, I didn't hear this until about a couple of years ago. And there is a difference between meet clients where they are and meet clients where you think they should be. When people say meet clients where, where they are, they truly mean that meet clients where they are. If the client's not ready to receive a service, accept that. Accept that they, they, they are not ready for you, but just kind of um, always keep reaching out and making sure that they know that you're there for whenever they are ready. Don't ever try to push them to, for a service that you know they need, but they're not ready for. Um, that's one. And two, know that it's um, it's a challenging field. Uh, you don't, it's kind of, um, you don't do it for the money. <laughs> you do it for, uh, because you really like talking, you like serving people. Um, it's a lot more paperwork and it's less uh, interacting with people. I was interacting with people a lot. Um, and now it's more of um, managing people, which is hard um, because you have to deal with so many different personalities um, and different, um, and just trying to balance that being, um, being a manager, being making sure that everything is followed to the uh, to you know you're following rules, but at the same time understanding that you know we're in a we're interacting with humans. Not everything is going to be perfect. Previous positions, I just did what I was told. <laughs> Pretty much, um, I was given a work plan. I followed the work plan. Um, I made sure that everything that was in that work plan that was constructed for us. Um, that we did. We made sure that our, um, we met our quotums, the quotas, and, you know, and I was out in the field dealing with the people a lot more. Um, with management, not so much. Oh, okay, I did some management, but when I did management for a for-profit, it was like working, for, uh, it's like managing a floor. So you're managing the night shift, you know, you the lead nurse and you're managing the night shift. This I'm managing a lot of other things. I'm managing um I'm managing money. So I don't exactly see the money, but I'm managing it. You know, um, I'm managing people. You know, even though it's not a lot of people that I manage, I'm still managing. I'm managing a building with people that don't necessarily work for me. They're housed in the building with me. I manage the building. So um, uh, it's, it's a totally different realm. And then not only that, um, when I'm, when I, and then not only that, I, I speak for a, a group of people. 
it's not like I just speak for my team. I speak for the patient population as well that we serve. So that's a big difference. It's not like I'm working at in 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 the hospital. It's not like I'm working in, and and yeah, I'm speaking for the patient per se. But technically, I speak for the patient we serve in our facility. You know, I speak for them. I speak for the people that work with me or in my team. I speak for the people that are housed in the building. Um, so there's a big difference from what I did before as what I do now. One of the major benefits of management uh, is autonomy. You're my supervisor. You do not have to each month say, hey, Jacob, your report, your invoice is due for housing on the 5th. Have you done it? How far is it along? Um, is it going to be done on time? You trust that, of course, I know the deadline and then I will do it by the deadline. However, with that autonomy comes a lot of responsibility. And I guess that would be one of the, I wouldn't say a bad part, but the part that you would want to be aware of because there's a lot of stress involved with that part. Um, <clears throat> the responsibility that comes with autonomy, but also the responsibility that comes with um, your job being directly related to other people's livelihood. Um, that's something that you, hopefully um, don't take too lightly. And that I think is the, the harder part of management. If it says that you um, get to, uh, at least for the nonprofit sector, I really like being involved in the grant uh, uh, writing process um, and, and knowing exactly um, how, um, just having an input on to saying what, what uh, what projects you um, you think you can work on and you should work on, and um, the challenges are just people, because people are people. The benefits for me is um, trying different things, um, trying to come up with new ideas to meet our population, our targeted populations, trying to think of things outside of the box. Um, and, and, and being willing to, you know, take a risk to, to do something, to, to dare to be different, so to speak. Um, and the risk, the, the, some of the challenging things to me is um, making sure your team is all on one accord. Um, trying to make sure, you know, your team knows that you are a team player and you're not just their um, direct supervisor or their overall supervisor, but also understanding, letting them, un letting them know that you are a part of this team regardless. Um, and I have, a, I have a soft spot for people. So um, I think another challenge is trying to separate job and personal because there are some times where those lines may get blurred um, when you're working with your staff or your team. So trying to make sure that you keep that balance. Uh, well, the benefit is that I gain more skills. You know, uh, I have a better understanding of how things are ran probably on a larger level as opposed to when I was working in, when I worked in the hospital, I have a more of an understanding of what a, what a boss is and what they have to do and what kind of uh, sacrifices they have to make. Um, and at the same, and how to, I'm learning more how to control myself because I'm excitable and I'm very, it's very easy for me to do that, but that's my personality. So I'm, I'm learning how to control that and say, well, wait a minute, let me think about this for a second. Before I just shoot my mouth off. <laughs> so I find that as long as you are working for people and you are um, you are doing as long as you are working for people for the right reasons, you you won't really have to uh, bend rules. 
um, there will be times where you may have to um, get upset and then th that you have to make that um, drive you to push for change. You know, especially for us in the HIV field, we, um, well, before when FAHAS was help, um, HIV and AIDS support services, um, it was a lot of um, fighting for what we knew that our clients needed uh, and making people at the top see that our clients needed those services. So you definitely want to be, um, again, you want to have that spirit of uh, fighting and not, and if there is something that upsets you because it's an injustice, injustice let that drive you for to make change don't let that discourage you. Social justice. We really need to talk about social justice. It's hard, and I'm and I'm not gonna lie, um, because being a woman of color, um, and seeing the social injustices that are being um, on display for people of color, it can be hard trying to maintain a sense of um, a sense of fairness, so to speak. Um, and, and I say that in the sense that um, when you see the, the, the trials and the tribulations that black people are dealing with right now, and how it's being for the first time um, in years, it's it's being captured. I mean, it's always been there, but now people are actually seeing the things that black people have been talking about for years. Um, and then still try to put on this happy face for um for America at large, um, especially when you dealing with people that you know are um don't have the same beliefs as you um that see no problem with the social injustices that are being displayed and so trying to remain positive and focused and not want that inner person of me that hurt person for the social injustice to come out it's difficult but again, I think that comes with maturity. I think that comes along with um, knowing that you have to pick your battles, so to speak, and that there are other ways to let your, let your voice be heard um, in the realm of nonprofit and in the realm of working with people who don't have your same beliefs. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a juggling act. It's a balancing act. Um, and it comes along with maturity and um, just trying to understand the bigger picture and what is most, what is most, what is most important, how you're feeling personally or what we're trying to do as an agency and knowing where, where, the, where the scale is and how to balance that scale and know that everything is in a battle and everything doesn't have to be spoken of in certain arenas, but still allowing yourself to be you and allow your, and allow your voice to be heard in other areas. So it's not easy, but it's a job that has to be done. Well, that is a loaded question. Um, so I alone, I don't think can single-handedly balance social justice and standard business practices. Um, however, I do think that my agency does a good job and works together to be mindful of social justice. And we are open to at e every level of the agency um, being pointed out where we could do better or we have failed in, in that regard. Um, so I think the answer is I rely on my uh, supervisors and other managers and additionally uh, the staff that I work with to all work together to make sure that social justice is, is something on our minds, but at the same time, uh, our clients and our mission is, is maintained.
you know that's hard um because because you want to be you want to be it's it's like i said you want to be on the side of right even though somebody's gonna get hurt but you still gonna you you want to be on the side of right you know uh and with business practices you got to be careful because sometimes it's easy to cheat and to lie because I've seen it in, in, in a hospital environment, but that's not, that's not what we, that's not who we are. You know, even my team, I say, well, you know, like if a patient is late, we have these, we, okay, I'll give you an example. When a patient is late, we still say you late, so you have to reschedule. Even though I don't want to do it, but if I start letting you get away with that, there's going to come a time where we're going to be exceptionally busy because I see it coming. We're going to be exceptionally busy and you're going to expect me to bend. And I can't, I can't do that. Even though I want to say, oh, well, okay. You know, and then I have, I have found myself going to someone's house already twice. I took them food and I took them their labs because they needed them and I wasn't sure they were going to come to the office to get them. And it was an emergency. I was totally not supposed to do that. I got told. And, and when you say social justice, I see that social justice. I see everybody needs food. So I don't know if that's what you're hitting at, but everybody needs food. The lady needs food. I took her her box of food. I didn't go in her house. I sat on her porch, but I did take her her food. Now the other lady, I took the labs to her. That was totally against it. And when I talked about it with someone else, Crystal, you weren't supposed to do that. I, said, I know I wasn't, but she needed to go to the emergency room. And I don't know when she was going to come by to get these labs. I don't know what was going to happen. I know this. She got the labs and I gave them to her and I charted it. Now, will I do that again? I'm going to tell you today, no. But hey, you never know.